There's so much involved that, listen guys, Zillow loses money, Redfin loses money. The, these discount brokerages, they're trying to figure out a way to do it. Let them keep swinging, but at the end of the day, I think I see where you're going with like digitalizing the experience to buy properties. It's not going to happen. There's so much involved. That, listen, guys, Zillow loses money. Redfin loses money. The, these discount brokerages, they're trying to figure out a way to do it. Let them keep swinging. But at the end of the day, people want service. If you go and look at the reviews for some of these companies, it's got awful because they're, they've got they're, because they're not paying the people enough money to really care about the actual consumer. They're not paying the people enough money to answer their phone at eight o'clock at night. They're not paying enough, them enough money to actually handle the entire transaction. They got one person for the listing appointment, one person for the go to MLS, one person for the showings, one person to negotiate the deal. It's like the right hand doesn't know what the left hand's doing and the consumer experience is awful. The lower you go on the money there, the worse the customer experience is. I think that it can get squeezed to a place that is still extremely lucrative for us and that we will rock on and this industry is going to continue to be a rock star. If you could take real estate agents out, it would have already happened. Technology has done nothing but make the world a better place for us. All the things that they that has been put in place for agents has done nothing but positive things for, for me as an agent. It's made my life a million times easier um, and hasn't taken a dot. It's, it's put more money in my pocket. So that's another thing you got to think about too. If technology gets to that point, are we actually doing more deals now? Because we could, because the technology is allowing us to more to do things a little more streamlined making a little less but doing closing more deals because i know i'm closing more deals because of technology i know i'm doing a lot more deals so many steps have been taken out of the whole equation that i now listen when i got in real estate no facebook no zillow no docusign no dialers no none of this stuff existed i did it all old school old school and i still do a lot of stuff old school no i'm not i'm not convinced i'm not convinced i see them floundering around trying to figure out how to make something work i don't think they have an end game I'm still trying to fit. I think they're still trying to figure it out. Everything they do, they lose money on. So I'm waiting to see. I'm, well, let's do Zillow iBuyers and lose $2,000 a house. Good, uh, great idea. <laughs> great idea. So I don't know, man. I'm sitting here watching a company that the only thing they have going for them is eyeballs to their website. And now they're going to do, they're, they're going to start taking our list, listings off, off their website and only put listings that are listed by Zillow. What's that going to do? That's going to take away the consumers that used to go there when they figure out they can't see everything unless they're going to do IDX unless they're then they're going to keep our listings on there but I don't think that's what they're going to do I think they're only going to show their listings so we'll, we'll see what happens I think that they're up against a huge wall and they're just trying to figure out how to dig their way out, if you ask me. I've been saying it for years. There's gonna be something that comes along, I believe, right? So when I got in real estate, I got five or 6% commission. Okay, the 20 years that I've been an agent, my commission hasn't got cut at all, right? And, I, and, and yeah, I do some four and a half, I do some different, I negotiate, right? I negotiate, I wanna, I wanna create the relationship and I make it work. I don't lose the deal over a little bit. I've always said that, and that I've believe at some point we're going to be in a place where 4% is like the new norm, just straight up 4%, two and two, 2%, two 2%. Two and you know what? It's still extremely lucrative, extremely lucrative. And the new agents that come into the business, once this happens, they're never going to know what five and six felt like. They're going to be tickled to death to get 2% on every deal. I'm not pushing it. Where do listings come from? When you talk to a seller, the most common answer I hear, the most common answer I hear when I ask a seller, where, how do they pick their agent at the end of the deal is I had a friend in the business. I had a friend. That is the most common answer I hear. I don't know about you guys. That's the most common answer I hear. And so it makes me realize, okay, my job, if I want more listings is that I have to make more friends with property owners, right? That's the name of the game. Our number one job is to make people feel comfortable with us and make as many friends in the market as possible. That is expanding our database, which by the way, I do a weekly email every single week on the same day of the week forever right since 2007 it's the reason why i'm able to continue to sell all these properties while what works for some people don't doesn't work for other people and 
so on and so forth. But I mean, I think the, the founding principle is that, that everyone in your market knows who you are, right? They know who you are, what you do, and that you're here to help. So how do we get as many people in our market to know who we are, what we do, and we're here to help? That's really the name of the game. So for me, it's like there should be two buckets, two machines in place here. One that's at a very high frequency getting you in front of as many people in your market as possible on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And then another machine that once you make that great first impression with them during that first interaction, this, there's this other machine that after that moment uh, allows them to never forget who you are and build that personal brand. Because that, like you said, it's all past clients and referrals at, at this point in my career. Why is that? It's because I built a great personal brand over the years with my clients as they did business with me, right? I took very good care of them and I stayed in touch with them at a very high frequency and they never forgot who I was and they never forgot the service that they got. Um, and so I built a brand around being a very hardworking, honest, dependable, consistent person. Um, and when you do that for as long as I've done it, you create a scenario where now you're in the personal branding business versus just the sales business. Whereas the sales business, you got to go out and do the sell again. You know, you got to sell every day and, and it never ends. When you build a personal brand, they both look the same in the beginning years. You know, they both look kind of similar. You're just hustling and bustling and talking to people and seeing what you can do to help and adding people to your database and this is the toughest market I've ever seen, right? The buyers are competing with 18 other buyers. No sellers want to list, no owners are listing because there's nothing to buy. What I see when I look at, you know, or look at agents in the market, I'm seeing, okay, because I'm talking to agents every day, and what I'm seeing is effort per deal is at an all-time high. The amount of people you have to talk to to get a listing, the amount of offers you have to write for a buyer, the amount of buyers that deals don't go through because multiple offers, they get frustrated and just stay where they're at and then you go deal with another buyer and go through three offers to get the get one accepted you know getting your business set up you don't know what you're doing it's like Chinese and there's a lot of pressure and stress uh, you got to pay your bills you're not selling anything in your first couple months it's tough so only the strong survive right 90% of agents fail but what I would say is like agents come in and have a goal of say you know 10 deals or 15 deals in their first year they get four months in and realize they haven't closed anything and they think they're a big failure how am I going to catch up I was supposed to do you know one or two deals a month I'm never going to be able to catch up what happens is you for the all your deals in your first year get lumped into the second half of that first year those first six months basically for free some people start closing deals sooner than others whatever let's just talk about averages here and reality and what expectations should be set the amount of deals that you close in your in the second half of your first year is going to be determined by how much work you put in in the first half for free um, that's just the way it is I've got a new agent he didn't close anything for six months and he'll end up the year with his first year with around 20 deals we'll see his first year is coming up in a couple months so if you get discouraged with no deals now and you don't build your business for later then you know you're kind of in a you're going to be in a tough spot and probably either either drop out of the business or end up at an average agent you know doing less than a hundred thousand a year or something like that so there's a lot of different avenues i've got a i've got a little link for new agents that i made that has like four little videos it's uh it's zero to diamond.com backslash new agent zero to diamond.com backslash new agent and it's just a little podcast that i think is really helpful for new agents in four or five little videos there just my content that i think is geared more towards new agents to kind of help them step up on the right foot and um, take the pressure off and kind of help them breathe and understand you just need to take it one step at a time you know and it's a huge mountain as far as the technicalities of it there's so many different directions you can go you know i take all my new agents and i sit down with them and really talk to them you know about what they want what their goals are uh, what their schedule is if they have a full-time job that they're working around to get going you know there's a lot of variables you know so at the end of the day, we want to figure out how much time we want to allocate to real estate per week. Best use of that time based around everything that we need to do in terms of meeting new people, growing our database, and educating ourselves on how to write contracts and learn MLS and all these different things. So being a new agent's tough. It just is. And it's something we've all had to go through. So if you're a new agent and you are going through it is tough and you feel you're feeling what I'm saying, just realize it's just something you have to go through and you just rough it out. And I promise you when you get to the other side, it's an incredible career.